Hello and welcome. It's Trust with GST and this is the view that's coming in from Indian industry, one of the most important stakeholders, people who will have to comply with the GST to make it a reality, people who will have to change how business is done in this country. We've got four very, very important people joining in from Indian industry. Rajiv Memani, Chairman and Managing Partner EY India, D. Shiv Kumar, Chairman and Chief Executive PepsiCo India, Bhaskar Bhatt, MD Titan and Pawan Goenka, the Managing Director at Mahindra and Mahindra. Thanks each one of you gentlemen for being with us and, and, and joining us right here on ET now in what we believe is a momentous day as far as the Indian economy is concerned. This really is the truth with just destiny. I think Indian economy is going to turn a chapter. Pawan Goenka, your sector is going to be impacted much like the rest of your colleagues on the panel here. Uh, while the large companies are prepared to roll out the GST and I'm sure uh, all of you have seen work happen over months now. What about the small vendors? What about the small traders? How prepared or how ready is India to embrace GST? Well, undoubtedly, I mean, uh, the small vendors and traders are probably bearing the brunt of this transition in terms of being ready uh, because large companies like Mahindra can definitely afford to have uh, large teams internally working on it as well as taking outside consultants uh, to help us uh, getting ready uh, with it and it's it was it was a fairly difficult transition i must say that we have had a large number of people within the company working for 6 months now to get ourselves ready and the small companies don't have those resources to make it happen so they will bear the brunt of it and I, in fact uh, where we will probably see a slowdown happening in the transition or where we see kinks happening in the transition will be coming from small vendors and traders We'll have to work with it. We'll have to live with it. And I think the, the larger companies will have to support the smaller uh, uh, sort of people in the chain uh, to hold their hand uh, and to bring them on board. And this is where some flexibility will be required. And it's a good thing that uh, the GST Council has extended the, 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 the time for filing returns by a month or two months, which will allow everybody to kind of streamline, do some uh, uh, corrections to the, the process uh, and, and retrospective changes to ensure that everybody gets aligned in two to three months' time. Uh, they really say that once the machine like that begins to roll, it's only a matter of time when everybody picks up. I'm at least candid that you're saying that companies like yourselves are obviously prepared and you have the resources to employ to be prepared, but it's the larger, it's the smaller and the, you know, the marginal vendors who are uh, going to struggle, people who've had, never had an interface. Rajiv Memani, come in on that. It is a momentous occasion for India, but how prepared are we to embrace the GST? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, so, Supriya, I also agree. It's a it's a momentous occasion, and I think all credit to uh, the parliament, parliamentarians and all the uh, members of the government who worked very hard to make it happen. So, congratulations to them. I think India is definitely prepared for GST. When a change of this kind and size happens, uh, there will always be hiccups uh, uh, during the first few months, uh, and I think. Uh, we should all be prepared and brace for it. But I think uh, I would say at an overall level, I think India is definitely prepared for, for GST. India, if not, should have been prepared because this GST has taken us, what, almost 14 years to get where we have. And I see no reason why anybody in at least Indian industry can say we are not prepared. And I also believe, I don't know if, you know, we can ever be prepared for a reform like that. But D. Shiva Kumar, you, you are in a business where, uh, you know, the success or, the, or, or whatever of your business lies on a lot of vendors, on a lot of distributors, and some of them really small. I mean, unlike auto, your vendors are extremely small. Your distributors, again, are even smaller. I'm just trying to understand from you, uh, you know, the level of preparedness at your end, at the end of these small vendors and distributors, what have you done uh, in order to ensure that the supply chain uh, is well oiled, is well maintained, there are no breakages there and, and, and you know, at, at that level I want to ask you the preparedness I believe that the whole concept of scale manufacturing will start because we had a disparate system now scale manufacturing wasn't there Tomorrow, thanks to a one common GST across the country, people will truly leverage scale and say, hey, here's a country now which benefits scale. So I think it has impact across the value chain. We've been prepared for it for quite some time. We've had a task force running at it uh, for quite some time. We've trained okay, 16,000 partners okay, across the country uh, you know, regularly, 1,200 people in the company trained for two man days almost regular. Now as we going into it, in 25 cities we put hot cells 
teams which are working on it with three levels of escalation, we are working with PwC. So, we are fully ready and 93 percent of our suppliers now are on the GSTN, 7 percent of our suppliers still are not and the government has given us time till July 15th for them to come on board and I truly hope they come on board. So, our level of preparedness is good. All right. As far as coming on board is concerned, your level of preparedness is good. But I also want to understand the shift from the organized, uh, unorganized to the organized economy. The shift from the informal economy to the formal economy. The shift from, you know, people who did transaction off the books to doing transactions on the books to not being able to evade or escape the system. And Basketball, I know you have a lot of skin in the game uh, as far as, you know, practices there are concerned. Uh, the gain you're expecting is, is what I want to know from the unorganized sector uh, that will have to shift and th that is where hiccups will be post 1st of July. Uh, you've already been able to gain a significant share post demonetization. Will we see a lot more of that happen? Well, let me start. Uh, you know, the jewelry sector has been um, facing several regulatory um, uh, so-called uh, restrictions or impositions over the last three years. More than that, actually, the, the PAN card and the you know, gold on lease, which was more a back-end uh, uh, imposition, which has been restored. But the golden harvest scheme, which uh, of, of Tanish, but uh, basically the, um, you know, the kind of installment purchase uh, uh, schemes that were made available, those have all been uh, now regulated. And uh, so, the the industry which has been used and including consumers who have been used to transact in cash, for example, that has been curbed post demonetization. But today, you know, the, uh, the, it is not a total uh, reduction. GST is going to make a very big, it is not so much at the, on the, at the consumer level, whereas demonetization was at the consumer level. GST is going to impact every jeweler and it is not just uh, jeweler, it is the supplier to the jeweler, the vendors including the bullion trade and so on, everybody has to register. So, any single member in the link, if it does not fall in, in line, then the end, uh, you know, the retailer uh, will have to reject that, uh, that supplier. So, therefore, it will bring a lot of order. And I, there has been a lot of activity in the industry for, uh, uh, you know, registration and falling in line. But uh, habitually, those who have indulged in, let us say, uh, blending uh, the gold uh, that they use with the, uh, you know, gold which is smuggled, they would have an increase in cost as well as some difficulty in declaring the stock as at the end of um, uh, end of today. Um, some of them would be without invoice and so on. So, how they are coping uh, will depend on each, each one of them making some choices. So, overall, I think there is no choice but, but to fall in line. The speed with which people will fall in line will depend on each uh, business's, uh, uh, you know, uh, both uh, readiness and ability to, uh, I mean, and uh, desire to align, because you can still continue to follow those old practices, but um, uh, a lot of players then will have to cooperate with you if you have to do that. It is uh, not so easy to be able to procure uh, gold, uh, let us say, uh, on cash and uh, from a non-GST uh, registered uh, supplier. All right, that, that's a long answer there. But uh, Bhaskar Bhatt, hold your thoughts there. I do want to understand, uh, you know, the protests on the street or, or all the words that you're getting in about people being scared. D. Shivakumar, because you say, you know, Pepsi has gotten involved with teaching and lending to the vendors and making them GST ready. What is fueling fear? Is it the fear of the unknown or, or do you believe GST compliance is actually complicated? I would say that unorganized industries, would fear GST. Unorganized companies, people who have been dealing in cash, people who have not had processes and systems and no ERP systems will be scared of GST. 
I think the larger wholesale market will be scared of GST because they have not been used to keeping inventory, keeping accounts, etc. And small retailers will worry whether they are in the bracket or not in the bracket. I think those are the you know big chunks of people who will be worried about GST. That's how I see it from the outside. Okay, that, that's a very definitive, uh, you know, answer that you're giving. It's the it's the people who in the unorganized sector, people who had no interface. Rajiv Mimani, since uh, you have your skin in the game and you cater to people uh, in that segment, is compliance with GST a challenge, especially for companies and traders who've never had a digital interface, you know, who, who've never known what an ERP is, who've never really kept books like like a lot of the big vendors, or big traders, or large companies do. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to start off with, uh, it will be a challenge, but I think like all things that are changing, where I think, uh, uh, you know, more and more things are happening through the mobile phone, more and more things are happening through technology, I'm pretty sure that uh, people will get used to it. But for, the, for people who are getting into this for the first time, uh, there is the fear of unknown, and I think there is a degree of change uh, which is there, which we should not underestimate. I think it will... Uh, I think it's very incumbent on the on the government, other authorities, to ensure that uh, you know the time is given and uh, you know pr appropriate levels of communication are there and support is given, uh, so that uh, you know uh, various traders, dealers, corporates, uh, individuals, sole proprietors have the ability to comply uh, with GST. And once they get into the platform, once the compliance happens, uh, I think once they g get used to it, uh, then hopefully they will experience the benefit. Uh, of it. Um, all right, Mr. Goenka, how big an economic disruptor is GST? I mean, you know, one can hate the GST, one can love it, depends on which side of the political spectrum you're at. But as one of the tallest captains of Indian industry, as somebody whose business is going to be impacted, how big do you think the impact is going to be? There's no denying that while demonetization was a surprise and a disruptor, GST has been, you know, we, we've known about the GST. It's a known devil, so to say. But still, I, I do want to pick up the impact from you. Let me admit that the complexity of implementing GST uh, turned out to be higher than what I had thought, uh, say, six months ago, okay? Because there are so many uh, wheels within wheels uh, that we need to kind of straighten out. Uh, so many things have to be rethought through. And it is not just printing a different invoice from tomorrow versus an invoice that we're printing today. Because the whole business has to be re-engineered in a sense to fully uh, leverage the benefit of GST. And therefore, I mean, th there is a doomsday scenario which says that from tomorrow, the company comes to a grind, the country comes to a grinding halt, nothing happens. I don't think that doomsday scenario will happen. Uh, but there will be some factories somewhere, some uh, flow of material somewhere that will get disrupted uh, because uh, somebody is not ready in the system, because they have not understood something. Uh, that will happen for sure. But uh, I would say that one has to take that in stride because it's a major change. And any major change like this, uh, one cannot expect it will be absolute smooth sailing. Uh, so I will not say uh, economic disruptor, but I would say that there would be um, transition pain, uh, some chaos that will happen, uh, which we have to live with, which we have to uh, be willing to accept uh, at all levels, whether it is the industry, whether it is the customer, whether it is the government uh, officials, we have to accept there is a disruption that is happening, which needs some flexibility to get everything back on track. And if that happens, then I think we'll be all right two to three months from now. Okay, so while we are talking about the disruption, Rajiv Mimani, how will GST change how businesses have been done in this country? Businesses, uh, I mean, you know, there, there is no denying. If somebody like Pawan Goenka, who represents one of the largest corporates here is apprehensive and is saying there is more complexity than initially envisaged. How will it change how businesses are done in this country? Yeah, I think, uh, so I think, uh, so I, my sense is the protest was more uh, for the fear of unknown and a big change. Uh, but I think two or three big changes. First, uh, we will see a much greater formalization of the economy. Uh, so I think uh, a lot of some parts of our economy, a lot of parts of our economy till now are not in the f in the in the tax chain fully. So I think a lot of that uh, should come in with the advent of GST, which I think is a very big change and a very good change uh, for the for the economy, for the country. Uh, and I think that's one big change. Second is I think just the competitiveness of 
uh, of India should increase with GST. Uh, over a pe it will take some time, but over a period of time, it will enhance the competitiveness of the corporate sector. It will enhance the competitiveness of the economy. Uh, and I think that's a, that's a second big change uh, that I think will uh, will happen. And third, which we are underestimating, is the is the technology change that is happening, the digital infrastructure that the government is creating through GSTN. I think that's a massive, massive change, and that will have a lot of impact in the way uh, financial transactions are done. In financial information is available. Uh, not only to the revenue authorities or tax authorities, but just taking financial decisions could be as simple as retail loans, credit card loans. I mean, the personal information, the corporate information that will be available will be very, very high. And I think that's a big change. Okay, that's a big change indeed. But let's get down to the basics and let's get down to the macro picture of the GST. And Mr. Goenka, uh, the, the, you know, the issue with the GST is that it was long touted to be this magic wand that will change things for the Indian economy. I mean, you know, there were estimates that said that GDP could uh, be, uh, you know, could actually be boosted by nearly one and a half to two percentage points. Given the nature of the GST that is being implemented, nonetheless, there is going to be a move from the unorganized to the organized phase. What sort of an impact do you believe this is going to have on growth per se? You know, especially the movement from the unorganized to the organized space of the economy. So I think uh, there are two or three things that we were counting on when we talked about the 2%, uh, 1.5% increase in GDP. One was that unorganized economy becoming organized, therefore a lot more revenue collection uh, coming out of GST uh, compared to what we had in the excise and VAT uh, uh, era. And I'm still, uh, I still see no reason why that should not happen, with one or two exceptions that we can talk about later. Uh, the second one was that if the prices go down, then we get into a virtuous cycle of more demand, more investment, more employment, more tax revenue, and therefore more infrastructure, and so on. But that is unlikely to happen because the way the GST rates have been set up, they're more or less maintaining prices to the previous level, some cases going slightly down, some cases going slightly up. Uh, and therefore, that would certainly not lead immediately, immediately, I, I, I emphasize, to a virtuous cycle getting created. But the secondary effect of GST, that is to say that the business becomes more efficient inherently uh, in the way we buy, in the way we do logistic, in the way we uh, uh, locate our stockyards, in the way we sell, that could lead to a cost reduction in the long run, not, not immediately, not on July 1st, but in the long run. That would then lead to a virtuous cycle also. So I would still say that uh, the basic tenant on which we had said 1.5% to 2% growth would happen uh, is not significantly compromised, uh, not exactly where we thought it would be, but not significantly compromised. And therefore, it may take a little longer to get to that level, but I think we will get to that level. Okay, so we will get to the growth level, but I think the other part and the other debate to look forward to as far as the GST is concerned is inflation. And we've had India's Revenue Secretary Hasmukh Adhya in conversation with us, and this question is coming your way, Mr. Shivakumar. And he's very categorically said that at least in the first one or two years to begin with, the government needs to watch out against inflationary, potential inflationary pressures on account of the GST. And everything really uh, depends on how much input credit offsets all of that. I'm going to ask you a simple question. The fact that transportation is going to be simplified, the fact that logistics will get cheaper, do you believe this will partially offset especially the higher rates that you have been put under. I mean, how and how crucial will input tax credit and all of that be to watch out against inflation? And I'm, I'm purely asking you a more macro question, but of course pertaining to businesses that you gentlemen are in. Yeah, I think the whole value chain, logistics, inventory, transportation, I think everything has to get simpler. I think today the transportation model still hasn't been worked out to a you know, full nicety. And... I won't say that as a criticism because when you start something like this, when you start something like GST, not every I will be dotted and not every T will be crossed and one has to recognize that. But I think what we need to say is, here's one tax law which everybody wants implemented. It's in the interest of the brand manufacturer, it's in the interest of the middleman, it's in the interest of the transporter and it's in the interest of the government. Everybody wants to make this work because in the long term, this will benefit all of us. So they will be teething problems. I will be the first to admit that maybe the whole GST is maybe 90% ready. But that doesn't mean that you know these 10% of the problems should be a mountain and we make a mountain out of a you know thing saying, oh my God, this can't work. That's not true. 
I think we have to work at it. And I've seen that over the last two weeks, the government has been extremely proactive in addressing each of the issues. I saw this wonderful full page ad yesterday saying, here's the question, here's the answer. I think with the right dialogue, I think we will get GST going. And I think over a period of time, I think uh, the country will benefit. Okay, I think I'm going to shift focus and talk to you gentlemen about something that a lot of queries have come in on and this is the anti-profiteering clause. Dr. Goenka, I'm going to ask you a direct question. The anti-profiteering clause seems to be unnerving a lot of people there in the uh, Indian industry because many believe that, you know, this, this could lead to tax harassment, the tax man then becomes a super cop of sorts. Uh, will this clause perhaps lead to a lot of litigation? That's, that's one such view that's coming in. It depends on how it's implemented. Okay. My, uh, my premise is that uh, a watchdog for entire profiteering for competitive industry is not needed because the competitive pressure itself will ensure that one company cannot sort of profit from GST while other company is passing it on because that, that company will become non-competitive. Uh, the reason I believe, and if I was to read between the lines from what the Revenue Secretary has said, the reason this sort of has been created is to stop a company or an industry that is trying to go overboard. Uh, if it does not get into, everybody has to sort of explain everything to some some authorities. Uh, if that happened, then of course it will be it will be unfortunate. But I don't think that's the intent. And as long as it is sort of uh, sitting there as a watchdog, just to make sure there is no gross violation of, of uh, GST intent. I think it should be all right. Uh, and, and to some extent, if it was not done in certain industries which are not under huge competitive pressure, uh, there could have been a situation where, uh, where, 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 where prices are, uh, are increased unfairly. For example, uh, the service tax issue, where service tax now under GST regime allows set off of goods purchase. Now, how do you account for that? Now, if a service provider simply adds 18% to the service cost, then service cost will go up overall. But service provider has to see how much of 18% is set off against the previous, uh, uh, against the goods purchased cost, which he was not able to do earlier, and therefore reduces service cost accordingly, then the prices may not go up. So these are the kind of places where I think the entire profiteering has to apply more when it comes to goods, I think most goods in India are reasonably competitive industry. And therefore, there I don't think that we'll have to apply that entire profiteering sort of stick uh, too often. Okay, okay. So I, I think the macro view and the macro picture is that even if there is an anti-profiteering clause there, it is perhaps not going to be put to use very often. It's really not going to be leading to harassment. I think the glitches always happen on the last one and which is where the fear is, that the tax harassment could happen with the last guy uh, in the tax network. But uh, Rajiv Mimani, because you deal with taxes and accounts and all of that, how big a concern is anti-profiteering to you? Many people believe that this is draconian. I think the former finance minister in his interview yesterday to us, Mr. Chidambaram, said this is draconian, this is anti-markets. Is this a concern for you? See, I think uh, in a lot of the GST laws that have got released around the world, uh, GST, VAT, whatever equivalent, this clause is there. So I don't think that there is anything new in this clause. I think people are worried because in the way, you know, in the, you know, how it gets implemented. If it gets implemented in the way it's written and drafted, which is on an exception basis where there's enough evidence, a proper escalation process is there, then I don't think, uh, you know, people need to be worried. But I think if it is raised as a tool to harass or it's indiscriminately done, then I think, uh, uh, you know, I would share the concerns. Uh, of of uh, of corporate India, but I think the government uh, enough representations have been made to the government. I think on more than one occasion, uh, senior members of the department uh, of the uh, Ministry of Finance have given clarification and the entire process in the way the escalation will happen. I think the gov I mean, if you actually look from government's perspective, one of the key things uh, is that they don't want uh, you know this to be inflationary. Uh, and I think they are very keen and are engaging with uh, various agencies, various corporates, uh, various sec sectors and industry groups 
to ensure that uh, the you know that we don't have inflation so i think they've kept this with them also uh, as a as something to show to corporate india that if they see any misuse then they have a tool uh, through which they can come after or they have a, you know enabling legislation uh, through which they can come after so i think this is really from a government standpoint this is addressing one of their key constituency concern the gst is inflationary Oh yes, and I think that's the, that's at least that's the view that the government is giving us at this point in time. But I'm going to get down to pricing with all you gentlemen because you run businesses and you eventually it's going to impact my life and the life of our viewers here. Bhaskar Bhatt, let's begin with you. Titan will be allowed to claim input tax credit. I'm really interested in you know how different or substantially different will rates be from now, and do you need to pass on any burden at all to the consumers? <coughs> We had. Uh, uh, a 1% excise duty if you remember and we had a vat as well so it is not a substantial difference what uh, there are some uh, an excise duty was introduced if you remember last year after much uh, furore you know 43 days of closure and so on and so forth uh, there is thankfully there is no uh, i mean because of the 3% increase uh, i mean increase to 3% 1 plus 1 and now this is 3 it is almost neutralized there is a small benefit not a substantial one no so i i just want to understand should should consumers then be prepared to shell out more for jewelry i'm just trying to understand because taxes are still 1% higher than existing ones for gold i don't think you should fear a price increase uh well there is still some non clarity as regards the see the there is imperfection in the in the so called uh, gold declared gold price uh, in every market uh, every market has a bullion uh, uh, dealers association or the, there's the so called gold trade which establishes the price which all players are expected to follow now that is not uh, uh, uniformly the, the the arithmetic is not uniform in in every city it varies uh, quite a lot um let's say in chennai you will usually find the lowest gold price and uh, delhi is different kolkata is different so there is those those choices will get limited i feel because that um, what formula they apply i really don't know today it is one gst unlike differential vats etc one gst across the country for gold at 3% so there can be only Uh, really one price but the old habits of declaring prices locally will continue there is no it is not a regulated um, industry with respect to price so as far as uh, we are concerned it will be simply whatever we have been doing in the past adding the tax 10% customs duty plus 3% gst or 1% uh, um, excise duty plus 1% vat etc would continue there is we do not expect prices to rise and we hope prices right. won't rise okay you don't expect prices to rise but the prices that i want to ask is d shivakumar we've seen your competitor coke increase prices for some product categories what sort of price revision do we expect from pepsi uh, before the gst does roll out or immediately after so if you look at it the big magic price points in this country if you look at the fmcg sector around about 90% of the business is between 5 rupee 10 rupee 15 rupee and 20 rupee price points okay if you have anything in this bracket the benefit that you are getting out of gst or not getting out of gst is to the tune of 50 paisa 70 paisa or something like that so take water the effective tax rate on water in the country for any brand could be to the level of maybe 24 25% it's come down to 18 right now so the true benefit is 50 paisa by rounding off 20 to 19 60 is not going to change the game okay so i believe when i look at our categories we are a multi category company okay when we look at our categories on the food side we see a benefit okay but on the beverages side it's even stevens so i don't see you know the big need for either huge price increases or decreases and i think after the you know gst transition happens tonight and after the first week is when company should take a call okay to say hey how do we balance the books 
All right. So even Stephen is the word as far as pricing at Pepsi is concerned. But on that note, D. Shiv Kumar, Pavan Goenka, Raji Memani, and Bhaskar Bhatt appreciate you joining us right here on ET Now. This is the view from Indian industry on the big, big goods and services tax. This is India's tryst with G GST. Thank you very much for being with us. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash etnow.